Welcome to the Growth Whispers podcast, where everything Brad Giles and Kevin Lawrence, that's us, uh, everything we talk about is about building enduring great companies, something that we're very passionate about versus non-enduring crappy companies is not something we're passionate about, although although we've we've seen a few. Um, yeah, I'm Kevin, and you know, Brad, my co-host is here today. Uh, Brad, how you doing? I am excellent today. Top of the world, in fact. Um, winter is almost upon us and um, things are good here, uh, in a good spot. And you, how are you? Funny, I, I, I used to have a globe sitting there. I'd swear that you're on the bottom of the world and not the top. Uh -huh. Isn't that where you're located? Uh -huh. I think you are. You might, uh -huh. you, you may, maybe you're a little upside down today. Yeah, that's a Northern Hemisphere perspective. Um, it is. Yes, uh, the South does not mean down necessarily. It could mean toward the South. Uh, but, uh, but do you um, think you're, do you think you're on the bottom and we're like, you know, seriously, when you're from where you live on the globe, do you think you're at the bottom of the globe? How do you see, or is your globe, when you sell globes in Australia, are they flipped around? So Australia's on top. Well, they're not because they're made in the Northern hemisphere. Um, um, I guess it must, I must be right. But if you <laughs> saw a, if you saw a mur Mercurator's projection of the world, um, would you see North America in the middle or Europe in the middle? Um, it depends on the perspective, right? And it's, it's that that one, that, but that's very logical. You know, it's 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 yes, it's very logical. Anyway, that's very interesting. I'm I am glad you feel like you're on top of the world, Brad. That is great. So let's. Uh, what's what's the what's what's your word of the day? Word of the day. So we like to start meetings with a word of the day. And that's why we encourage people to do it. Mine mm. is guardrails. Mm. Guardrails. So working with uh, a group of entrepreneurs last, uh, last week, um, and we built their hedgehog uh, for them. There was a group, just a small team. We, we worked to build their hedgehog. Um, and so that they could... Think about a mountain. At the top of the mountain is, is your BHAG. Along the way is your three HAG, your one HAG, your you know your one year, your three year, and your ninety day plan. Um, and so the hedgehog, as you climb that mountain, provides you guardrails. You know when you're kind of driving through a curvy road up a mountain, they've got these rails on each side so that you don't accidentally crash and die off the side of the road well um i'm thinking about guardrails so the hedgehog is the guardrails as you ascend the mountain that keeps you on track um so that you don't do things that you shouldn't be doing and what's yours kevin love it well interesting mine is inspired by an incident with a guardrail of sorts that i had <laughs> i had a couple of days ago um but yeah mine is patience so um, I've mentioned a few times on the podcast, a passion for car racing and, and, and cart racing, uh, which is a very fun and intense thing to get to do with a lot of my friends and their sons. And through a, 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 an unfortunate event and a mistake that someone made um, non-maliciously, I had to avoid someone at a very high speed and collided with a guardrail of sorts that made a very hard thump when I hit it. So I spent you know, the, the greater part of Friday in the hospital with great patience. And as someone who never sits still and doesn't like to sit still, I had to sit for mm, four hours before I saw the first doctor and they did all kinds of tests. Then you wait for the results and then do other stuff. And then they sent me to a, another hospital to get another test. So all in all, uh, I, you know, the whole process took about 11 or so hours. Thankfully, I was all good. So I got to go home. Um, but I, but it was actually great because I'm not patient by nature, and I, but I am thrilled to have the opportunity to wait for good care because they did all the right things. Another doctor I talked to at the track after said they did all the right tests. They double checked all the right things to make sure there wasn't any you know, internal bleeding and all this other stuff. So I was very patient and I had no problem sitting and waiting because I wanted that expert help. Uh, and I got it, and I am thrilled to have the opportunity to wait because I know in some parts of the world, you, you don't even have the opportunity to wait for proper healthcare, you know. And as, as much as we'd like things to be faster, so yeah, mine is patience. And uh, but although it's tied into your, it's a cat the catalyst for it was a guardrail, as, <laughs> as was your word of the day. 
So, um, yes, and patience, patience is a wonderful attribute to, for a non-patient person to have. Gratitude, deep, deep gratitude. And I'm really appreciative of the, of the medical people that helped me. My gosh, I'll wait any time that I need to for good help. So you had uh, patients uh, hanging out with other good patients. Patients. Uh, waiting for the doctor. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And I got to say, these doctors were awesome. They were so wonderful. They put me at ease. I mean, I think I, I'm not good with needles and I had like four or five needles jabbed in me and they were the, they were so nice and yeah, gentle about it. Anyways, good fun. Thrilled to have great help. So today, what are we talking about, Brad? We have, you know, we, we've got, I, I you know a split episode today. We got two separate ones that we're doing and, you know, today is part one and next week will be part two so so tell us what's what's the theme here today super excited super excited every single episode we talk about building enduring great companies but you, you know what why why are we talking about enduring great companies well today we're going to dig into that and specifically what we're asking is are you planning to sell or planning to keep your business and if you don't know if you're planning to sell or planning to keep. Maybe you're stuck in what we call the mediocre middle. So this is part one of two. Yeah. And the mediocre middle is a place that we're going to give you some things to think about and encourage you to not be. Because the mediocre middle is also the painful middle or the excruciating middle, uh, the maddening middle. So we're going to, we're going to dig into that today. And it's super important because, you know, as, as you know, we, Brad, you know, you and I do a lot of discussion about working with enduring great companies and a majority of the companies we work with, you know, they're building their businesses to keep them for a long time and to make them into amazing machines. And then some, you know, build them and they want to sell them, but they're both doing it with a distinct purpose, either to sell it for a great return in a few years, you know, handful of years, three, five, seven years, two years, um, or yeah, keep it for three, five, seven decades. And, and often when we start working with companies, sometimes they haven't made up their mind yet, or they think they want to sell because they can't stand it, or they think they want to keep it because they don't know what else to do. And so it's just a matter of sorting things out. So that's, that's what we're digging out to today. What camp are you in? And let's, let's just make sure you do it with a purpose. And I remember um, something my mom said to me many times as a kid, and she'd say, walk with a purpose, right? Like if you're going somewhere, go, you know, and versus just kind of wandering or lollygagging around. And I think we want to do the same thing, you know, like L build your lollygagging. I've never heard that. Never you haven't. Heard that. <laughs> well, that would be something that we talk about on the top part of the world. Right. It's, it's, it's a... <laughs> It's just about, you know, wandering aimlessly, floating around. Okay. Yeah. Lollygagging. That's a new I don't even, I don't, I got to look up where that comes from. No I'll problem. check that in a minute. Lollygagging. So, so we got a, a couple of, 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 of key things to talk about, but the, the first is that, you know, it's, it's, it's tied into lollygagging, which again, I'm going to have to look that up, but it's, it's, you know, the no plan plan, like, I love doing the no plan plan sometimes on a Sunday afternoon when I got some free time. You know, it's beautiful if you've got this adventure vacation and you can just wander around and just see where it takes you. It's, it's an awesome thing to do. Um, but just not a great thing to do in business. Going with the flow and wandering with wherever the winds kind of take you usually doesn't go so well. And if you don't have a real purpose and aren't really driven towards you know something um in this case the something we're talking about is building it to keep it or building it to sell it uh yeah yeah it just, it's it's it basically it's an excuse to have an undisciplined way to run your business yeah um many people might say well we don't even we don't think about selling but then that's it there's we, we're not thinking about selling, but then it's just a void of emptiness beyond that. And then they say, well, look, if someone came up with a, a, a huge check, we'd probably sell. Like, you know, if they wanted to give us a ridiculous amount of money, we'd probably sell. But that's the kind of point of this episode is that having that is not necessarily good for you because that is what we call the mediocre middle. So, um yeah, if if you're going to 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 be in the mediocre middle, there are some 
negative consequences that come with that. And so what we're doing is we're saying, this is a spectrum between we're planning to sell or we're planning to keep. If you're not yes. at one of the, uh, if you're not at one of the ends of that spectrum, you are at risk of being in this mediocre middle that can produce mediocre results potentially and um, can put you at a risk of not being able to endure. You know, it's a risk that you don't even know that is there. Yeah, and you could be at risk of lollygagging, which I looked up for us, Brad. Thank you for that. And lollygagging is to fool around and waste time. It's similar to the word dawdle, which is to spend time idly or move lackadaisically or to spend, spend fruitlessly or lackadaisically. You know, you know, so basically you could be dawdling, you could be lollygagging, or you could be having the time of your life. We're not saying you're doing something wrong, but we're just generally, if you're, if you're kind of stuck in a mediocre middle, it could hurt you like that with a lollygagging. Is this going to be your new favorite word, Brad? Yeah. Welcome to the grammar whisperers. Uh, yeah, where everything exactly. we're talking about is building better grammar. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. No, 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 no. So let's go to houses, right? Let's go yeah. to houses. So yeah. are you, 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 some people uh, buy a house to flip. They buy it, they improve it, and then they sell it a short period, you know, months or a couple of years later. Mm -hmm. Other people, they build a home. They buy a place to become a home, and they might even want to keep it for generations. A, 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 an extreme example of that might be, a you know, the Kennedy uh, mansion or the Kennedy property on Cape Cod. Now, maybe you haven't been there. Maybe you haven't seen any photos of it. But the Kennedy dynasty, the Kennedy family have a property on Cape Cod uh, that has been there for generations and they plan to keep it for decades to come. So they treat it differently compared to the person who is building to flip or building to sell or buying to flip. Um, and they also treat it differently to the person who's just kind of coasting along and doesn't even think about should I keep this house for a long period of time yeah and that's something that we can fall into the trap of and again people aren't doing this because they they are you know consciously deciding to be there and that's what we want people to get you know you can have a place that is a mediocre place to live or a place that you tolerate or you can have this this place that you're thinking about for generations into the future which some people do or you can flip it that's good too. Don't just get stuck in the middle of, well, it works. It suffices. It's okay, right? You want to have it that it's, that it's meant to be amazing for the long term, or it's great to flip for the short term and don't get stuck in the middle. Now, we're not saying if you've got a home that you live in, that's fine. And it's all you need for right now. We're not saying that. We're using the metaphor of it because maybe that's the way you want to live. But we're talking the extreme of a business, which is a commercial enterprise. It's not the place where you raise a family. And, and some people get stuck in just having a business that becomes lackluster, not fun. And, and that's what we're, what we're looking at on this is, is that really, um, yeah, deciding and being conscious of it because you make very, very different decisions now. And, and it's interesting, you know, in, 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 our discussions, you know, lots of companies will have strategic plans of how they're going to make the business better, right? They'll have plans and they'll have goals. And that's great. But what's the shareholder plan? Like, what's the plan for the shareholders, you know, from that perspective, the team can be rallying towards, you know, making a stronger company. But from a shareholder perspective, is this a, 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 a uh, uh, an asset that we're going to build and make great for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years in the future? Or are we flipping this? And in some, sometimes I've seen companies where, you know, the CEO and executive have a very good plan for the business, but the shareholders don't. And the way the shareholders look at it could directly or could, could have a notable impact on the strategy. Because if they're thinking a 30 year time horizon, that's very, very different in terms of how they invest, how they look at their team, and how they look at all kinds of other things. 
um, is very different if they're going to flip it in three years. No different than the host example. You know, the Kennedy Cape Cod home, uh, that, that compound that they have, you know, they would think different about maintenance or what they build versus if they were going to flip it in three years. Yeah, yeah. I love that. A strategic plan and a shareholder plan. So the strategic yeah. plan is how we're going to basically build the business and grow the business, but then having a different page, a different document where we're thinking, okay, so how are the how are we going to make it work for the shareholders? Now, that may be um, an 80% overlap with the first document, but it's a different lens through which to consider this, a different way to think. So how, what are the shareholders looking for? And it could be you, it could not be you, you could be a part of that. But knowing that the shareholders uh, are the shareholders, you know, maybe they're looking for dividends over the long term. Maybe they're looking for um, some slight capital growth, um, but whatever it is, making the decision around that and saying, yeah, we need to deliver these things over a period of time makes a huge difference. Yeah, and it even affects the risks that you'll be willing to take. Heck, even think about bringing children into a business. If you're selling it in three years, you don't even consider it. Yeah. If you're keeping it for 300 or 30 years, you're probably going to teach your kids more about the business. You might have a plan of how you involve or don't. It, 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 as soon as you zoom out to a longer term time horizon, you change your thinking and, and change the conversation yeah. versus same as when you zoom in to a shorter term exit, you change the thinking and the conversations. And that's really interesting because in my conversation with a lot of entrepreneurs, what they think is they feel they can't zoom out because the existential threats are too big. Okay. So they think that they're going to, if, if they try to think in the long term, that some they will get taken out and they won't be able to endure. Right. Okay? But I think it's a it's a illogical concept. Like it's, it doesn't make sense to say that because it is they if they have an enduring mindset, they will get over that. They will survive and endure and adapt and pivot and change within the confines of their hedgehog to get to that enduring place. They will Correct. endure because they have the enduring mindset. Right. And, and so it's, it's definitely the entrepreneur thinks they can't zoom out because it's dangerous. Yeah. But the enduring great person knows they, they need to zoom out and they need to zoom in. They, they, they know they need to do both because if you just zoom in, you know, you could get lost in, 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 in the forest for the trees. Like you could, you could lose your way and lose your perspective. If you only zoom out, that's dangerous too. So it's an end, but it was interesting. You know, our, our, our icon that we use in our firm, Lawrence and Co is the end sign, you know, and it's primarily, yeah, the ampersand it's, it's, it's like, basically it's about not compromising. Mm -hmm. It's about thriving at work and having a great life. And I caught up with a friend of a friend recently that's um the, the, interestingly in, in 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 she's been thinking about the same thing and some of her stuff about the power of the and you know it's this not having to choose and it's about how the and is critical that this can happen and that can happen where a lot of people think they have to choose in some cases between two things and, and sometimes you do but some of the best decisions are fighting the and yeah. Right. Is you have to zoom out and zoom in. Now, that kind of goes against one of the things that we're saying here. <laughs> <laughs> but I was it's, it's, no, but, but but you cannot really think about building to sell a company in the short term. It's very hard to and then then do an and for the long term. And yeah, you know, you and truthfully, you can have if you're really going to do a good job of selling a company in the next three or so years, you probably are going to have. 80% plus on the long term, 90% on that long, oh, sorry, on the short term, and a little bit about the long term because you got to allow the thing to succeed. And the same thing, if you're if you're building it to 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 endure and to keep it, you can't have everything only focused on the long term time horizon because there is a business to run today. The point of it is 
is that if we go look at some people feel this balance between zooming in to details and short term and then zooming out to longer term strategic, you need to do both. And, and it's just a matter of how much you wait on each. And if you're going to build an enduring great company, you're going to wait more to later on, right? To lo longer in the time horizon, the longer time horizon, where some people won't put almost anything on it. And that's, and, and that's, you know, one of the things that we're saying, you've got to, you've got to pick. By not picking, you are in the mediocre middle. And that's really the whole point of today's episode is to say, are you building to sell or, or are you building to keep? Do you have a plan to sell the business or do you have a plan to keep the business? Because the absence of one of those can create a real, you know, a, a real risk that you actually won't endure. You won't be able to zoom out to that 1,000, yes. um, 100,000, excuse me, feet perspective and make those long-term considerations and decisions on where you, you're going to head. Um, so because you're you... not even because you're not even thinking about it, and it's not you yeah because it's just not something. And again, if you don't put energy into it, it doesn't usually move along or kind of happen the way you want. And that's it. So all, it's really what we're trying to say today is, hey, are you consciously building to sell in the shorter to medium term? Are you consciously building to build it for the long term and build an enduring great company for decades? But but don't allow yourself to float in between or not even think about it. Pick one and drive hard towards it. So how do you know that you're in the mediocre middle? A listener might say, well, we've got a BHAG. I don't think because we've got a BHAG, I don't think that we're in the mediocre middle. Uh, big hairy not. audacious, big hairy audacious goal is is the BHAG acronym. Um, so how would we react well, to how that? How do you know you're in the mediocre middle? Well, your business is probably mediocre in lots of different ways. Really, that's the, like literally like so. You know whether you look at you know, the kind of people on the team. Like if you're gonna sell a company quickly, you need amazing people producing well. Yeah. Or you're gonna blow it out for a cheap price in a fire sale. But mm -hmm. if you're gonna get all the money for it, if you're building an enduring great company, you need to have darn good people making the decisions and driving it ahead. So people could probably be mediocre. Um, your performance could be mediocre, right? Your margins... You know, your margins and 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 your profitability likely could be mediocre. And even thinking about the balance sheet. Like, truthfully, if you're going to sell your business, you might be fully levering up your balance sheet to maximize growth, right? Maximizing growth, um, which would maximize, could with, in, depending on the business, would maximize sale price. But if you're building an enduring great company, you're probably going to have a notably less leveraged balance sheet. Yeah. Because you want, you want backup and, and buffers for when the economy gets weird. Yeah. And, and, or so you can capitalize on opportunities. So, you know, your balance sheet would probably be quite dramatically different, but in a mediocre middle, you know, it's probably either not great um, or it could be. Or, or, or it's not fully leveraged because you're not pushing it forward aggressively. So what because, else do you think would tell people? Go ahead, Brad. Oh, well, because you're thinking about this, this shorter term. You're thinking, mm -hmm. oh, I've got this other distraction that I want to, uh, you know, take money out for. Or I want to, um, I want to, I'm not worried about weakening the balance sheet of the business. Another way could be culture. Uh, maybe your culture yeah. is... Uh, is not as strong as it is because you're just kind of, you know, operating. You're not really um, building for enduring greatness. There, there isn't that right. vision there. Maybe your vision, yeah, maybe you do have a BHAG, but maybe people aren't necessarily as connected to it or it, it doesn't impact them in a meaningful way. Um, so, yeah, yeah, maybe. It's like it's like in the house metaphor. Like if, if, if you're just, it's just a place to sleep. Yeah. You know? You're not going to clean it up to flip it and maximize the profit, or you're not going to make it cozy and feel like a home for yourself. And I, I, and I, what we see a lot of people 
that haven't consciously made the choice, especially to build an enduring great company, they don't actually love their business. Like they yeah. don't really enjoy it. You know, it was interesting. I was chatting on the weekend with some friends and we're talking about different businesses and the pros and cons. And I made reference to um, the fact that, you know, the consulting business, if you want to, you know, get rich and, and sell your business for a hundred million dollars, consulting is not the place to go. Yeah. <laughs> Coaching and consulting, that is not likely to happen at all. Uh, although many of our clients are do and are able to do that. And, and a friend, another friend said, hey, as we're talking to our kids and about you know, business and investing and stuff. And, our, and, and, I, and I said in a business like consulting, you need to take your extra profits, invest it. And that's how you kind of, you know, you build wealth for the long term. And, and, and another friend said, hey, Kevin, just, 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 just don't forget though, you love what you do, right? And, and, and not everyone that builds some of these amazing businesses does love what they do. Because I mean, I love what I do because I've picked a business to endure. I want to keep doing this when I'm 80. Yeah. And I, and I, and I have to stop myself from doing it too much because I love it. I know Brad, it's the same for you. Yeah. And so, and, but that's, 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 that's almost like it's, it's, I don't have to, I don't have to endure my business. I love it. And it gives me endurance because it gives me so much joy back, which is, which is a piece of it. And that's if you're on that, if you're on that particular road. And so you got to find a way yeah, that your business is not something you need to endure. And, so, and you make some, go ahead. So maybe your business drains you. Maybe yes. a sign that you're in the mediocre middle, that you're not, that you don't have a plan to endure is that you're feeling drained. Because if I said to you, you need to still be in this business in 20 years time, what are the things that you need to do now yeah. to be confident that you will want to and you will enjoy right. it in 20 years time. What do you need to do? You know, it's one of the first things they might say is, well, I'm going to fire those two people. Well, then let's get after it. <laughs> let's get you know, after Brad, it. But that's a great question, Brad. How would you feel if I told you you would be doing this business for the next 20 years? Yeah. At the pace you're doing it today. Yeah. Because if your answer is awesome, then your business is set up in a way where it works for you. And if it's not, look around at the points that aren't awesome. Fix those damn things. Because that, that is an indicator, again, that you're in the mediocre middle. And that, that, is, that inspiration, it's not there. Um, and, and you can plan your way through and beyond that. It's important to, to really understand that. And that present I when you're it. not passionate around that that presents risk that that you know it presents a risk that you won't endure by not putting in these longer term plans not by not being mm. able to be um certain that you're going to endure uh it, it inadvertently creates the risk that you won't endure yes because you're not building it and setting it up so that you can endure and want to endure it versus getting burdened by it. Yeah, that is awesome. So if we really, you know, what we're talking about here is, is that, you know, in that mediocre middle, there's a bunch of stuff that won't work for you because you're basically accepting a lower standard of whatever, whatever it is um, that, that would be different if you chose to flip it quickly. Uh, or, or, or you were going to, you know, endure it for the long term. I just had this flash in my mind. Um, somebody I know, uh, who were main nameless lived in this house for quite a while. And it was, it was a place to sleep. Let's call it like, you know, yep. a bunch of, there was some, a bunch of half finished projects and, you know, and, and things were just sort of, you know, everything was okay. Well, they decided to sell the damn thing. Man, did they whip that place into shape. Yeah. They got all of their projects finished. They got everything cleaned up. They got it organized. The place looks so different. It wasn't funny. And I, I didn't say anything, which is unusual for me. But I, I laughed to myself. It's like, okay, so you lived in a place that to your, in your mind was mediocre for all these years. You decide to sell it and you clean it up so the next person can enjoy it. <laughs> and you don't get the benefit of that. And, and you know, and, and maybe that wasn't important to them. I don't know. 
but it's just funny how people make their places awesome when they're going to get rid of it. Yeah. And it's, 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 it, it makes, you know, why wouldn't you make it awesome and keep it or make it awesome and enjoy it. And again, different values. Maybe that didn't matter to them. I don't know. Maybe it was only an economical motive, an economic motivation. It's fascinating. It is awesome. So a good chat today. Um, we spoke about the question, are you building to sell? Are you building to keep a business or are you in the mediocre middle? So this is part one of two. And in the next episode, we're going to specifically talk about how, how do you build this? What do you need to do? And how do you consider uh, how to build an enduring business in this sense so that you don't end up, so that you don't stay in the mediocre middle? Mm -hmm. So the key points today were the no plan plan is great for vacations or Sunday afternoons, but not for business. And really freedom from plans is not freedom. You end up being at the whim of whatever happens. And so you need to have a strategic plan for your business and a shareholder plan for what you're going to do for the long term with this amazing asset or business. And then we talk about houses. We say, well, really, there's houses you flip. There's houses that you live in or just a place to sleep, let's call it, or you know, live in for a short time. And then there's homes for generations like that Kennedy Cape Cod home. And, and we're encouraging you to consider either you're going to flip this darn thing or it's going to be a home for generations, but don't get stuck in that middle because in that middle, it feels mediocre. It often drains you. And as I wrote down the thing that actually came out of my mouth as we were talking, you end up needing to endure your business means tolerated or put up with it versus your business giving you endurance in the form of joy and fulfillment. So it, is that something that you feel you need to endure or does it give you endurance? And that's really a great, uh, a great summary of this. And what we want for you is to not risk put, uh, building a, a great company and having the endurance to do it and, and missing out on the opportunity in front of you and selling it just because you can't stand it. Again, if you sell it strategically, awesome. But if you're just selling it because you can't stand it, that's a whole other thing. Awesome. Well, we hope that you enjoyed this part one of two uh, episode of the Growth Whispers, where we always talk about building enduring great companies. I'm Brad Giles, and you can find me at evolutionpartners.com.au. And Kevin, the North Northern Hemispherian that has... Top of the world, we would like to call it, yes. ...has been chatting uh, throughout this episode. You can find him at lawrenceandco.com. We hope you enjoyed our episode and we hope you can join us next week for part two. Uh, in the meantime, have a great week.